After having studied the capacitances that characterize the MOSFET in its power derivation, the power MOSFET, it's now, it is now possible to study the turn-on and turn-off behavior of this device. As usual, we will now consider the turn-on and after the turn-off. So assuming that an inductive load is present. This, as we know, is a very common situation for power devices. The test circuit that is uh, characteristic, for, characteristic for many, many other circuits is uh, well known. The inductor, that is a charged inductor, there is a current flowing through it. The freewheeling diode and the device. In uh, this case, the gate to drain capacitances and the gate to source capacitances are, are highlighted, but these are usually present as parasitic components. The driving is conducted very similarly to what is done in the real circuits with the voltage generator and a gate resistance, gate resistance that has the is here to limit the direct current. In other words, if this resistance is not present, charging the, the, the increase of this voltage would directly charge these capacitances. And the uh, voltage derivative here is actually uh, connected to the voltage, the, to the current flowing into these capacitances. In this way, you limit the current flow and determine the speed of charging and, the, and discharging these capacitances. We are talking about the turn on in transient on an inductive load. We assume then that this uh, MOSFET is in the off state. The current flows through the inductance. And since this MOSFET is off, the current is freewheeling through the diode. The voltage here is uh, more or less equal to VDD on the drain of the device. Uh, with the uh, with the, the voltage with the voltage drop on the on the diode added to this, the actual voltage would be VDD plus the voltage drop on the diode. The gate voltage is at zero. The voltage drop on gate to drain capacitance is large, and there is a large depletion region in the device. The gate to drain capacitance is at its lowest value that we named GD1. The turn-on transient begins with the positive voltage applied to the driver here. The voltage we are talking about is usually 10, 15 volts. These devices will have uh, uh, two, three volts of threshold voltage and uh, needs to be driven at quite high gate voltage in order to minimize their own state resistance. This series resistance, RG, is needed in order to mimic and also limit the current that flows through the driving circuit. Actually, now the maximum current would be VDR, that is 10, 15 volts, divided RG. When this voltage, the gate voltage, reaches the threshold voltage, the, the device starts to conduct and a portion of this I star current flows through the MOSFET. The portion that flows through the MOSFET is actually diminishing the current flow through the diode 
and when this current is zero this diode is rever can be reverse biased and actually this drain voltage can be reduced the schematic waveforms for uh, gate to source voltage here on the top plot are uh, shown here while uh, the bottom plot shows which are the current and voltage waveforms for the device there is a large difference in these axis values this VGG, this is the driver voltage on the gate, is 10, 15 volts. The threshold voltage here, threshold voltage here is a couple, three volts. Uh, on the other hand, here, here we have the currents and the voltages on the drain. This current in, is in the orders of the amperes, and the voltage is 50, 50, 100, 200 volts. This is the supply voltage of the power circuit. We can analyze the transient behavior starting from time instant zero here. At the beginning, we are just charging the gate to source and gate to drain capacitances that are in parallel. The MOSFET is off. Hence, these uh, waveform here is an exponential waveform that could saturate at uh, the driver voltage that is 10 15 volts for quite low voltage this is more or less linear up to two two three volts the time constants is proportional to rg that is the gate resistance multiplied by the input capacitance that is CISS this is why these parameters are important for the device you don't see CGS separated by CGD in this case you, you see the sum of, of them the exponential uh, waveform wants to saturate at VGG but this is not the case because as we see something absent happens in the middle At T1 here, the gate to source voltage is equal to the threshold voltage. Here the device starts to conduct. The condition for the MOSFET is uh, BGS at a quite low voltage, slightly above the threshold voltage, with the drain voltage at a large value. We are then in pinch off with VDS much larger than VGS minus VT. In pinch off, we can say that the current increases uh, proportionally to the to a power or v, of VGS minus VT. Uh, for a conventional MOSFET model, this uh, power would be two. We have a K VGS minus VT, the square VGS of, of VGS minus VT. Uh, for real devices, the, uh, this alpha can also be reduced, can be 1. In our approximation, we assume that the current is increasing linearly with VGS minus VT. Then between T1 and T2, this uh, gate voltage keeps increasing with the exponential waveform that starts to bend here and the drain current increases it is shown here linear can be not linear linear can be quadratic the, the important point is that the current increases the current is however still lower than I star 
and the diode is still in the on condition and it is keeping fixed the voltage on the drain to VDS, VDD plus the on, the on of the diode. Let's say VDS more or less VDD equal to VDD. When we reach the time instant T2, this situation changes. At T2, the drain current is exactly equal to I star. The current cannot increase anymore. The entire drain current, the entire inductor current flows through the MOSFET. The diode is off. We are neglecting the reverse recovery behavior. We assume that the, the, that the diode switches off instantaneously and the current cannot increase. Then the current is fixed to I, this I star. And what happens? Now the drain voltage can reduce. <coughs> While VDS reduces, this VDD minus VDS is the actual reverse voltage of the diode. What we can see here is this strange behavior of the gate voltage. But it is, this is better clarified with the, in the next slide. In the off state, we are working here. Between uh, 0 and T1, we are still in the off state. Between T1 and T2, the current is increasing, but the drain voltage is constant. We are moving in this direction. This is the T2 instant, when at a given V star, VGS star, that is this voltage here, the device current is exactly equal to I star, this value here. Now the current, the current is constant, the voltage decreases. We are moving uh, along this uh, curve. Please note that V star GS is still constant. We are in pinch off. We are fixing the current, and uh, in pinch off, there is a direct relation between current and VGS. Then VGS is constant. The drain voltage VDS decreases down to the value, let's say, VGS minus VT. This is a rough, very rough approximation, however, to the saturation voltage while keeping the gate voltage constant. The drain current is, current is constant and the drain voltage decreases up to T3. This is uh, how you can explain the behavior watching and examining the IV characteristics. But there is also another explanation, more physical maybe. Let's see that from the capacitive point of view, during the time interval T2, T3, we are actually keeping the gate voltage constant and the drain voltage is decreasing. What we are doing now is uh, discharging the gate to drain capacitor. This is the Miller effect in uh, analog amplifiers, low power amplifiers. This is the Miller capacitance. We can see this, this, this capacitive behavior when we watch 
at this uh, waveform that starts with a very fast transient because the capacitance is low when VDS is at, la is at a large value the gate to drain capacitance is very small and so you can discharge it very fast when the voltage reaches go, is close to the saturation voltage the gate to drain capacitance increases and it is uh, more difficult to discharge it the charging, charging and discharging current is uh, the gate resistance current is the driving current is the current that flows through the gate resistance <coughs> we can say that this current here charges the in this case is going is flowing through the gate drain capacitance and is discharging the capacitance the i star current is flowing here and the entire driving volt current is discharging the capacitance this capacitance is at very low value when vds is at when vds is large when vds decreases this gate to drain capacitance is a much smaller volt Then we are at T3 t time instant. Here the situation is different because we are here. Now the, we are exiting from the pinch off region. The drain to source voltage is quite small. And uh, a further decrease of the voltage is actually bringing the device in the linear region. As you can see, moving from ear to ear, keeping the high star current constant is modifying the Vista VGS voltage. This curve here has a larger VGS voltage than this one. Hence, from this point on, there is a small decrease of the drain to source voltage and the gate voltage increases up to the final value, VDR. This is, this is the car with VGS equal to VDR, V driver. Note also that uh, the discharge of this capacitance is actually the discharge of CRSS. This is another parameter that we use when that we see into the data sheets. Again, from the external point of view, you always see that uh, due, to the, due to the inductive switch, you see this increase of the current without the reduction of the voltage, and the voltage decreases only when the current is at its maximum. This will increase the power dissipation during the switching. From the gate point of view, you see this uh, large Miller region. The speed depends on uh, how much current you can uh, drive into the gate because this is a capacitance it depends on how fast you can charge and discharge the capacitance the turn off the turn off for the mosfet follows more or less the same behavior in the in reverse manner <coughs> we are now in the on state the entire current is flowing through the MOSFET this current is flowing through the MOSFET 
this gate voltage is more or less 15 volts. Uh, this diode is reverse bias since this is more or less 0 volts. The capacitance is now at uh, its uh, low value, uh, its high value, because uh, VGD is uh, quite small. And the diode, as previously said, is in the off state. The, actually, the, this voltage drop on the, on the, on the inductance is VDD minus V on, and is actually charging the inductor. But we assume that the inductor is a, has a quite large value, and the current increase is not significant for this test. So this means that we can assume that the current is constant. At a certain point, the driving circuits forces V1 to 0, or even to a negative value. VGS starts to decrease in a linear way to the discharge of the input capacitance CISS through RG. The MOSFET current is the same as I star because the diode is still in the off state. This is uh, true until the voltage reaches the supply voltage. The schematic waveforms for VGS are the following. From T0, the starting point of the switch off, to T1, the MOSFET is in the linear region. We are moving from this point to this point with VGS that reduces and there is a small increase of the drain to SARS voltage. The current is constant to I star. From T1 to T2 we are in the pinch off region. The VGS is constant to VGS star and we are actually charging the gate to drain capacitance with a constant current. These, uh, the VDS waveform is then like this. At the beginning, it is quite slow because the gate to drain CRSS capacitance is at, is at its highest, highest, va highest value. And uh, the final phase is much faster because the capacitance decreases. When the VDS is equal to VDD, time T2, it is now possible to, to reduce the current because the diode starts to conduct. At time T3, the, the gate voltage starts to decrease because now the current decreases. We are moving uh, from here to here. VGS decreases, and when VGS is equal to the threshold voltage, the current is zero. After, after T3, there is still a tail of the gate voltage that needs to reach zero, 